Hey everyone, Seth Campbell here. Welcome back to Segway Plays The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In the last episode, we continued exploring uncharted areas of the Great Sea. We found our first Triforce chart, though we still need to get that deciphered. And we competed in and won the Birdman Contest at the Flight Control Platform. After that, I intended to sail one more square south, but forgot that I had changed the wind direction and ended up sailing straight northwest back to Seven Star Isles from the flight control platform. And at first, I was frustrated because that was a mistake on my part, but there is actually a good reason to have come back here. And I had forgotten about this. So we are going to tackle that since we're here anyway. Just gonna turn things back, the, turn the wind back southwest. Southeast, because clearly I know my directions. But if you look around, see, I believe it's off the southwest. Let me take a look, actually. Because I know that I know what I'm looking for is here. I just don't know exactly where. I think this may have actually been what the old man Ho Ho was looking at. Except I can't find it. Somewhere around here should be something interesting. I'm gonna keep looking around and I will cut back in when I have found what I am looking for. Okay, this could be it. I'm uh, right about here in the quadrant. And you notice a whole bunch of seagulls flying around, and yep, we remember what that means. It's another big octo, and this one has got 12 eyes on it. I'm just gonna uh, take a pictograph, why not? Since you have to do it, you no normally, uh, you know, it's important to get the full body, but you really can't do that with this guy. Uh, incidentally, my whole memory card corruption seems to have gone away. But anyway, since this guy has 12 eyes, I strongly recommend using the boomerang, even though it doesn't deliver incredibly strong hits. Uh, and I'll experiment when I see another big octo. I think that a, a bomb or an arrow can take out an eye in fewer hits than a boomerang, but because there are just so darn many of them, and because I don't think you can actually, can you L target a specific eye? No. I recommend using the boomerang. Or may maybe the more eyes they have, the fewer hits it takes, because I remember I needed four hits on each eye last time. But I'm, I'm seeing some go down here. Um, but yeah, you want to use the boomerang when they have this many eyes so that you can take on four or five at once and really kind of whittle them down more quickly. That's my advice. Oh, you can L-target the individual eyes, but it's uh, only when you get close enough, I guess, to certain ones. Okay, one more. We're cutting it close here, but uh, let's see. Got him! And where he sinks to the bottom of the Great Sea, a ring of light appears, and we know what to do with that. If I can ever get over to it. Uh, 
This is where you want to use the sound to your advantage since you don't really have a treasure chart to work with. The sound you can spin around and the sound in stereo will sort of pan to where the treasure chest is. And it's a piece of heart! So as you would expect, you defeat Big Octos, good things happen. Anyway, now that we've taken care of that, I am going to sail down for this unexplored sector south of the flight control platform, and I will see you when we get there. All right, here we are in this new sector, and if I'm not mistaken, I can see the fish man jumping over there. So let's see, this is another uh, uh, rock formation, it would appear. Uh, yep, close enough. Phew! Alright, everybody, say it with me. Oh, okay. small fry! So this is the Star Belt Archipelago. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? I wouldn't sail through these waters on nights when the left half of the moon is missing. You'll regret it if you do, Fry. I'm warning you, it's not my fault you get so scared you can't go to the bathroom at night anymore. And that's all the info I got to offer. Those sea hats are so weirdly silhouetted in just the way they're frozen there. Okay, so yes, this is the Star Belt Archipelago. Because if you'll notice, I, th I think, is it true of all of these? Um, yeah, I think these... Um, you know, rock formations are meant to resemble constellations. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, places where you got treasure uh, become marked on your C chart. And what I'm trying to do now and failing... Oh, incidentally, here's our Triforce chart. If we try to open it, it just says this map must be interpreted before you can read it. I want to see if there are any outstanding treasure chart treasures. I still need a better way to say that. At the archipelago, but at the moment there do not appear to be any. So with that in mind I feel like what do I feel like doing? I feel like going to Outset Island, because there are actually a few things we can do there. Plus, it's always nice to visit home, isn't it? And after that, we can explore some of the uh, areas in Uncharted Islands in the southwestern portion of the Great Sea. Actually, before we actually set foot on the island itself, you may remember that when we got our sea chart, Outset Island was on it automatically. So we didn't need to get a fish man to paint it on. However, there is a fish man jumping around. So if we go up to him and offer him some bait... Oh, a small fry. Aw, oh, give me a break. What's with using the same bait all the time? Don't they make a premium brand of this stuff? Oh, well, such is the life of a fish. So, you want to hear the info about this here island again? Now, this is the interesting thing. He reacts as if you had already given him bait and learned the secret of this island, or the, the bit of advice about this island, in the way that any other... Fish man around the Great Sea would if you feed him for a second time. Of course, we never did, but this is what you have to do. 
I heard that beneath the big head boulder on top of that there, on top of the hill here on outset, is where the greatest treasures of all, the golden triumph forks, are buried. But actually, Fry, I must have misheard or something. Because this one guy told me that the, what was actually buried beneath that weird rock was a chart to this shot of something called a Triforce. Who ever heard of that? That's crazy. There's a big difference between Triumph Forks and Triforce. I mean, I think someone intentionally buried something misleading there. You don't say. So this, this is where they flat out spell it out for you. That the whole bit about Triumph Forks that all the fishermen have been telling you about is just another obfuscation of the word Triforce. And a lot of people probably wouldn't think to give this fishman bait because the island was already charted. So they, you know, talk about burying something misleading, intentionally burying something misleading. We see you, Nintendo. We see you. That's all the info I got for you, Fry. You better be thankful for the clues you got from me. I'm serious. Hey, what's that? My small fi, that's a fine-looking bow you got there. Where'd you get that? If you're not in any kind of hurry, uh, why don't you stop and play with me a bit? Okay. Woohoo! Of course you will, Fry. And to be honest, you'll be helping me out. See, I've been having some ferocious body aches that only acupuncture can cure. Check it out. I'll give you ten arrows for that bow of yours. And I want you to aim those suckers at me when I leap out of the sea. Yeah, see if you can't peg me with them. For each arrow you nail me with, I'll give you 10 rupees. And if you hit me all 10 times, I'll give you 200 rupees. What, you worried about little old me, Fry? Ha! Don't be. I'm a manfish. Maybe it is manfish. I, I never know if it's manfish or fish man. Every, every, everyone, like, I see it split down the middle, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be fish man. I spend my life being tough enough by seas rougher than any you've ever seen. Those areas or arrows of yours ain't got nothing on me. Get ready to start, small fry. Yeah, so this is a little mini game that you can get by feeding any fish man for a second time. It doesn't have to be this fish man here on outside. It could be any of them. But as long as you have the bow, you will get the opportunity to do this. And it's pretty simple. The bow is set to A. That's the only thing that's really unusual. You cannot L target, unfortunately, but you just... Wait for the fish man to jump. And hit him with the arrow. Oh, he can be, uh, it can be a little, y you can lose him. The good news is he's pretty close, so the arrow doesn't have to travel very far. And if the wave, uh, if the waves are friendly, you can see his shadow underneath the water and you'll kind of have advanced one. Ah, but he can jump pretty far. So yeah, the only thing you're going to get out of this is rupees, as he said, but it, you know, it's a good way of making free money because it doesn't it doesn't cost you anything to play except bait, I guess. I'll see. I don't know if he lets you play a second time. There we go. So the most you can win is 200 rupees. What's the deal, Fry? You could only hit me four times? Oh well, what's a manfish to do? Well, use your 40 rupees. Go on, take them. If you want to do it again, Fry, just scatter some more bait for me, okay? And with that, I'm off. Okay, yes. So, you do have to give him more bait every time. Um, but it is, you know, bait doesn't cost that much, and it's a good way to make some money if you need it. So, I wanted to show that. I I don't think I'll do it again, just because, you know, the, you can't get anything permanent from it, just rupees. But I wanted to show that that's there, and it's something you can do. It's a fun little mini-game. Incidentally, for those of you seeking acupuncture for various aches and pains, I cannot stress this enough. Do not have people shoot you with a bow and arrow. It is not going to help. But speaking of buying more bait, here's Beetle. We could probably use some. Thank you. 
Let's see how many. Oh, we got uh, 25 points. We're pretty close to that. Uh, that 30. Um, See, 27. Pretty close to that 30 points uh, bonus. Oh, no. How many bombs do I have? Maybe I can... Uh... Oh, no, I can't. I don't need any more bombs either. Okay, so I can't buy anything more. But we're, we, we're going to see this soon. So that's awesome. But anyway, that kind of fast tracks us all the way back here to Outset Island. Okay, so, remember way in the beginning of the game when I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out how you're supposed to get that blue rupee? Well, I'm pretty sure... Just need the... Oh, uh, it... Huh? Oh, for Pete's sake, this is not... Oh, I have no magic. That's the... Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem because, you know, the whole Birdman contest thing. Please, please let this be the way you get it. Yep. There it is. Okay, we didn't need to worry about that. Now, something... I actually, I didn't remember this, uh, and I question if I ever knew about it for sure. You can crawl under Link's grandma's house. And there's a little hole that leads to the basement. And... I mean, it's not really much of a basement, I guess, but it's just a uh, under the house. And there's an orange rupee, which is a hundred rupees, and let's hope that's not Grandma's savings. I'm not sure I feel good about taking that, honestly. But I wanted to show you that it was there. It's up to you whether you want to take it or not. Now. Hmm. I'm trying to think of all the things I want to do while I am here. And actually, there are just a couple, I think. But I want to um, change it to day. And there's that cheery music that we haven't heard since the beginning of the game. But anyway, you might have noticed, even while it was still night, that there is this uh, gigantic pig that was not here when we first left this island. And Abe, our resident uh, pig expert, let's see what he has to say. You know our pet pig? Well, to be honest, we named him after you. Lucky you. He's very smart, just like you. And just like you, when you feed him some bait, he starts digging with all his might until he digs up treasure. Wait, you don't do that? I wouldn't mind you testing your might by picking up that pig, Link, as long as you take him for a walk afterward. What do you say? Yes, so this is something else. If you have the power bracelets, you can pick up... You can pick up... Link the pig. And... It's... An incredibly slow process. But if you... Can bring Link the pig to some fresh soil. 
which I am trying to find. Ah, for example. See that patch of grayish soil over there? That is some ideal soil for pig digging, the big pig dig. That's how I uh, wrote this down in my notes, and I'm probably not the first person to call this little quest the big pig dig. But, uh, let's see. No, come back. Link. Link, come back. Oh, no, don't throw him. I didn't want to do that. That was mean. Okay. Hey, Link. Link the pig. Come here. Okay. So, you feed him some bait, and he digs. And unfortunately, all that is in this little, uh, dirt patch is a bunch of morphs. So that wasn't good, but... There are other dirt patches. And I shall speed up our walk to them because you shouldn't have to suffer through this as much as I do. Here's one. Maybe this will have something worthwhile. Link. Food. Red rupee. That's pretty good. But something tells me... There are... Some more dirt patches over there. Well, would you look at that? There are, in fact, two over here. Let's see if Link can find something for Link. Well, 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 well. It is a piece of heart. That is awesome. I need to find another word for awesome. So that is what this is all about. The big pig dig is to get that piece of heart. I actually, I want to see what else. Let's see uh, what's in this one. Just, just for curiosity's sake and because it'll give me an excuse to buy more bait from Beetle and get uh, more points from him. Not bad, some bombs, some arrows, and a yellow rupee. So yes, that is what the big pig dig is all about. But if we go back up to the very top of Outset Island. Oh, there is a dirt patch here. I was wondering if I could remember the, and it's kind of heart shaped. I honestly thought this was where the piece of heart was, but I'm gonna go back and get Link the pig and just come back here with him and I won't make you suffer through the long walk up. Because curiosity's got the best of me now and I, um, I, I, I gotta know what's in it. Oh, this, this, this is one persistent morph, I'll give it that.
as I near the top, I I can't help but think of the book slash movie Holes. Does anyone else remember that? And the whole carry the pig up the mountain, feed the pig, and it gets stronger. And I can't, I can't help but think of that. I never really connected those before, but uh, no, come on, come on, the bait is right there, dude. No! No. All of that for nothing. Yep. And yet, yeah, Link the pig is now down there in the water. He looks okay. Hopefully it's shallow water. Hopefully he makes his way back to civilization. <laughs> He's turning around. Why are you turning around? Don't... Uh. Okay, you know what? I was right there. I scattered the bait on the dirt patch. Okay, maybe it was a little off to the side. Oh, what? I don't understand. I don't understand. Why? Anyway. So you remember when we were last here, the old man Ho Ho was looking over at that giant stone head. And he said that underneath it was something very secret. And the fish man also mentioned something about it. So we should really get over there and check it out, don't you think? The tree is blocking Link. I can't tell which direction I should be facing. Northwest? It'll have to do. Okay. I think I can make this in one go. If I have full magic, that is. Glad I didn't start that before. Okay, there we go. Magic, magic. Magic, magic, magic. Magic, magic, magic. Yeah. Okay. Had to do that. Okay. Am I gonna make it? Hmm. I think so? I think so? Come on, now the wind is kind of working against me because this is kind of on a curve around the side of the island. But, there we go, yes! We made it, and as I mentioned, we would not have been able to do this before we got the power bracelets because it's one of these giant stone head things. And there's a cave. And what is in this cave, you ask? This cave is, let's see, does it actually call it this? The, the Savage, Savage Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Deep in the never-ending darkness, the way to the golden shard you seek awaits. Yes, this. Oh, do I have any empty bottles? Okay, yes, I have one that's just plain water. I am going to empty this because I may very well need it. This is... Okay, I'm going to level with you. This is basically a gauntlet of super tough enemies. I believe... I believe it goes in groups of ten. Each one based on a dungeon. So for example, we're in this first level here that is, you know, very Dragon Roost Cavern-y in its atmosphere. You have to defeat all enemies to cause the fire around the next hole into the ground to disappear. I am going to take the fairy bottle off of my... Um, 
button display because I do not want to use it accidentally. I'm actually... Th this is hard. Getting all the way through this is among the harder parts of this game. For anyone, if you haven't played this game, but you've played, you know, like the Paper Mario, the first three Paper Mario games, and, you know, the uh, the Pit of 100 Trials, or there's the Cave of Ordeals in um, in uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. One of the Boca Blinds just hit the other guy. I think that's hilarious. Uh, these joy pendants aren't really crucial, but anyway. So there's the Cave of Ordeals in Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. And, you know, in so many games, just these kind of gauntlets. Just seemingly endless. Um, wave after wave after wave of enemies. You, you know that these, like, they start off simple enough. And you think, okay, I got this. And then they just kind of ramp it up and you're... You're doing okay, but you're losing just a little bit of health each battle, and then the next thing you know, you're whittled down to next to nothing, and up comes a very formidable enemy. You, you, you know the pain of these things. But anyway, because it's basically just fight, 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 I don't think... You really need to hear me say all that much, so I'm going to speed it up and play some original music. Okay, brief uh, thing here. So at the end of each dungeon's segment, there is one of these recovery rooms. You'll get a few hearts, a few items, uh, consumable items like bombs and arrows, etc. You know, some rupees. And you are given a way out. So like, if you get to this point and it's clear that this is too much for you and you're not going to make it, you can go out and restock and save yourself the time. Otherwise, you just keep going. So, onward we go to the Forbidden Woods portion.
As we reach the second recovery room here, I just want to take a moment to uh, mention something I noticed and get all these very generously left here rupees. Um, ordinarily, you don't get any healing items from defeating enemies in the challenge floors. There are only some hearts here in these rooms. But I discovered something by accident. I was testing whether or not you could extract a golden feather with the grappling hook from... Mothulas that don't have wings, and the answer is no, you can't. But if you're lucky, you can get a heart out of such enemies. So, if you're desperate, feel free to try using your grappling hook on whichever enemies you can find, and maybe they'll give you a heart. Another thing, rolling puts fire out. Stop, drop, and roll. As we progress through the Tower of the Gods section of the Savage Labyrinth. Let's go back to the music. So as you can imagine, once the whiz robes and dark nuts get involved, that's when it starts to get tough. But we have made it here, which I believe is 30 floors down. And we see another one of these wind crests. And definitely get all these rupees while you're here. Trust me, you're gonna need them soon. But we know what to do with these. And if the past is any indication, it is indeed another Triforce chart. So, we're done at the Savage Labyrinth, right? Wrong. This is all you have to do to complete the game. But if you feel so daring and wish to continue, this is obviously just the, uh, the safeguard to make sure you've completed the necessary temples. You can break the statue and continue onward.
And I guess this doesn't really look like the Earth Temple, except it's in Earth. So I guess that's what we're going with. But I wonder, can you, uh... Oh, you can. You can shine light on these guys and just break them. That is cool. That doesn't last long, though. Okay, but... Oh, oh boy. Okay. I think... Oh, uh-oh. This is really terrifying. But I let's say we go back to the music so this doesn't give us too many nightmares. Okay, we're at the next recovery room, and I told you it was going to get harder. Lots of rupees, though, which are always very welcome. I probably should have done that one pot at a time. But anyway, it's a good thing I have two fairies and a bottle of elixir soup, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up needing it. Now, I guess this is sort of almost kind of in templates, just in the way they recolored the air, but not really. So I guess when we get to this point, it's less about the dungeons. 
But yeah, it's gonna get real tough from here on in. Okay, first fairy used. Sooner than I would have wanted. Yeah, these, these electric choo-choos are really making it difficult. You know what? I think I know what I should be doing. Let me try this with the hammer. Does this work? Yes, it does. Okay, that's what you should do with this room full of choo-choos. Use the hammer. Stun them all at once. Use this to your advantage. I think I may commentate from here on in because it's... Like I said, it's going to be very much tougher battles with important things like that. Uh, to talk about. <laughs> yep, like that. You hammer the switch, a whole bunch of whiz robes. Try to double shot these guys if you can. Because the more there are, the more fires flying around, the more trouble you're in. These guys are the Red Hood ones, so they're the weakest. So you can take them down with two arrows or with just one fire or ice. So it's up to you if you want to use magic or not. Personally, I'm going to avoid it for a little bit. But let me see how many... Oh, I only got 40 arrows. Hmm. So yeah, it's a choice of conserving either magic or arrows. Boca blends in the dark. This isn't particularly noteworthy, except that there are lots of them. Hiding in the shadows. Okay, let's see. Is that all of them? Yes. Oh, no, I didn't need a boca stick. Anyway. What next? I'm getting very nervous because I know I have... Okay, yeah. Uh, Redeads and Stolfos. Do these guys stun at all? No. Okay. Remember, the Stolfos have quite a range, and the Redeads can freeze you. I would say take out the Redeads first if you can, because they can just keep freezing you, and the Stolfos can then whack at you. The Stolfos are a bigger threat in terms of how many hearts they take away. But also, it kind of looked like he missed me because of the freezing cutscene there. Yeah, wow. I... Okay, I kind of assumed you would still get hurt. But I guess no, the screaming pause is just to give the Redeads time to catch up. It doesn't allow the Stealthos to hit you. Okay. So in that case, I guess it matters less. Although I would still say take the Redeads out first, because they they really, um... If they keep freezing you, they really, um, as, as John Mulaney would say, they're, they're big on throwing you off your rhythm.
If you, if you haven't seen uh, the John Mulaney Kid Gorgeous uh, comedy special, that won't make any sense to you. Uh, but you should go watch it right as soon as this episode is over. Check it out on Netflix. Kid Gorgeous, John Mulaney. Great stand-up special. Okay, yeah. Dark nuts and moblins. Stepping it up with the heavy hitters here. The one saving grace is that they can hit each other. The problem is they'll usually hit you as well. But at this point, every hit counts. Both for you and for them. So if you can kind of line them up, and it's hard to do this deliberately, but if you can kind of get them all into an area and then have, you know, sort of goad the Dark Nut into swinging his giant sword and taking down three of the Moblins, you know, that's a good thing to be able to do. Oh yeah, Dark Nuts and whiz ropes. Oh, yeah, and the walls are electric now. Just in case this wasn't hazardous enough. No, I don't wanna... Okay, I think that's it for the whiz ropes. Now for the dark nuts. This is a new uh, color scheme for dark nuts. I don't think we've seen this yet. Oh, yes we have, I guess, because these, the, these are the ones with the goatees. The goatees or the red eyes, these ones just look a lot meaner. Okay, there's another one who's still alive yet. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's it. And so just when you think, can't get harder, right? Okay, field full of bomb flowers. And Stolfos. Stolfos with those rangy attacks and, uh, okay, these walls are not electric. Okay, so they're at least merciful in that score. But you gotta be real careful, because it is easy, easy to set these bomb flowers off. And if you do, like I just did, you wanna get far away fast. Because these can just trip you up big time. If you can trigger them and get away fast enough, they will hit the Stolfos, so you can take advantage of that. But when when a Stolfos kind of goes on one of those wild swings like that, as you saw, it'll activate most of those bomb flowers. Which, of course, as I said, will hit the Stolfos, so it can be used to your advantage. But if you're anywhere in the line, you'll be hit too. Like that. Be careful. This is, uh, they, they mean business. Okay, just one Stolfos left, and I am low on health, and I'm not thrilled about that. Where's the head? Where's the head? There's the head. Oh. Oh, come on, not again. Okay, there we go. No, get away from the... Bomb, flower, half a heart left. I, okay, I have one fairy and a bottle of elixir soup, which has two servings. I think I'm gonna be okay. Oh, but yeah, here we go. Four mighty dark nuts. I think these qualify as mighty dark nuts. And the walls all have those moblin statues. These ones I d don't shoot lasers, at least, because, you know, you'd be dead the entire area. But they do breathe fire, so you gotta stay as far away from the walls towards the center as you can. Maybe these aren't mighty dark nuts. I, don't, I, never, I can't remember if it's the helmet or the cape that determines it. The only real way to find out would be to take a picture of one of these guys and see what it comes out as in the Nintendo gallery, but I'm a little preoccupied with fighting them at the moment. One 
down. One hit another. Again, the the uh, the friendly fire on the part of the enemies can honestly can be the difference between making it through the the last bit of the Savage Labyrinth or not making it through. I can't remember if this is the last one or not, but I sure hope it is. It is. Okay. It's over. It's over. And for all our efforts at the end of the Savage Labyrinth, we get a piece of heart which just happens to be the fourth in a new heart container. Yes, so we're at 15 hearts, three quarters of the way, and we are thankfully done with the Savage Labyrinth. Now, Though some of you may know there is a change in the HD version that involves the Savage Labyrinth, but I am not going to talk about that yet because there's another component involved uh, and we haven't seen it yet, so I will address it only when we get to that. But I think we've done more than enough for this episode. Whew. We, uh, we dug with the pig. We defeated a big Octo, and more than anything else, we made it through the Savage Labyrinth, only using up two fairies to do it. So we're going to call it here, and in the next episode, we are going to continue to do some little things around Outset Island before we hit the ocean again. See you next time. <laughs>